So please join me in welcoming Carl Treen. I've been trying to, for a while, find a really good definition for permaculture. And it's not up here. Um, I, I finally found this uh, definition on permies.com. And it was uh, this gentleman by the name of Peter Ellis, who I don't know from Adam except for this, this quote. He said, it is the rigorous and thorough application of informed common sense. <laughs> and so we can talk about herb spirals. We can talk about you know, all of these elements that permaculturists love and use all the time. But unless you are applying informed common sense to your practice, it doesn't make any sense at all. So the sweet version, I wanted to start, the way I'm going to organize this talk is not just plant after plant after plant. There will be some of that, but what I want to do is put them into sort of theoretical uh, companion plantings. But there was one plant that I just, at the end, I really wanted to talk about, but it didn't quite fit into the, the guild that I was trying to put together um, for, for my talk. So I thought I'd talk about it first. And this is the sweet birch. Has anybody here, is anybody here familiar with the, the sweet birch, also called black birch? Has... Absolutely. Excellent. Remember it in Boy Scouts. Yes. And other people. Now, what do you, do you remember what you do with the sweet birch? Make tea out of it. And how is that tea? Right. Well, you never forget it, will you? Birch yep. Birch beer. It's, Absolutely, it, it's one of my favorite flavors. It also is a flavoring in wintergreen and is a medicine in Ben Gay. Now, it's, it took me a month to learn this, this chemical, and I'm going to try and come up with it. Methyl uh, salicylate. Did I say it right? Okay. Methyl salicylate? All right. Anyway, it is a... Uh, it, is the, it is the flavoring that is in the Winto Green Lifesaver. It is also in Ben Gay, but a much higher concentration. You can actually die from applying too much Ben Gay. Um, but the 0.2% the concentration that you find in most foods that have that flavoring, perfectly safe. Um, it's, it's got aspirin-like qualities, and so too much of anything like that can, you know, be, you can overdo it. But, um, but it's, it's got an interesting quality, and I don't know, I don't know, this is kind of so much detail, but I find it really interesting. If you take a window green lifesaver and pop it in your mouth, and then go in the bathroom, turn off the light, and, and look at yourself in the mirror and chew it, it will look like fireworks. And that's the methyl salicylate, which has a fluorescent property. And fluorescence really is it takes a, um, a certain kind of wavelength of light that you can't see and turns it into wavelengths that you can. So when sugar from the candy combines with nitrogen from the air, it creates a chemical reaction that creates light that you can't see. However, methyl salicylate from the birch, if it's in that candy, it will take that light, turn it into light you can see, hence the popping fireworks. Anyway, I love that story. I don't think it's got anything to do with permaculture. But I just love, I love this tree. The twigs can be boiled um, in hot water, make a delicious tea. If anybody's ever had chaga, chaga tea. Oh, by the way, I, I'm putting this whole thing online so you don't even have to take pictures. And your, your handout has the, the, uh, the uh, thing of feel free to take pictures if you want. I'll take that as a compliment. The, um, the most flavorful chaga, chaga tea is a, is a, um, uh, the fruiting body of a mushroom grows in birch trees quite often. Uh, most flavorful chaga uh, always comes from sweet birch or yellow birch. Um, at medicinal doses, as I, as I said, it's uh, like an aspirin, so you really don't want more than 0.2%, which is generally what's, uh, what's in food. Um, you would cut the twigs for tea in late summer or early autumn to minimize the damage because in the spring, it's just, it's like a, it, um, like a birch, well, it is a birch. It's like a, a maple tree just pumping out sap. So if you cut them in the spring, um, you're just going to do damage, more damage than you want to. Very long-lived birch. 
And this is where I wanted to talk about one principle that I think can be used in permaculture, and that is um, the principle of coppicing. Uh, is anybody familiar with coppicing here? Does anybody practice it at all? Excellent. Okay, so you want twigs, right? So you don't want a birch tree that's 30 feet tall and you've got to climb to get your twigs. So coppicing is a practice of letting it grow to a certain height and then cutting it off at the base and then letting more twigs come up, cutting them off at the base, and letting more, and eventually you turn something into a bush. And if, if you do this with a birch tree or a linden tree, they can live for thousands of years um, as long as you let them get enough energy into their roots before you cut them off again. Um, and so this is a great way, if you're trying to grow twigs for your birch tea, to do that. It's also a great way, and we're going to talk about linden a little bit later, um, but, uh, but that's a, a great way to handle that. 